In this video, we're going to go over lab 2.1, which is to create a 2-bit counter from the arbitrary waveform generator and drive it to uh, two LEDs. And then we're going to introduce the logic analyzer, which is an instrument which can measure the, the digital values of signals. OK, so the objective of this is to look at how logic symbols can be representations of data. <clears throat> okay, So a logic signal by itself can only take on a 0 or a 1. But when you group them together, you start being able to form uh, sets of information such as numbers. So for example, if I had two logic signals, I could potentially form a number that could represent decimal 0 up to 3. <clears throat> and as you add more and more logic sig signals or to the to the data, you can represent more and more information. So what we're going to do today is kind of investigate that by creating a 2-bit binary counter uh, using the arbitrary waveform generator. And we're first going to look at driving that to two LEDs so we can visually see a binary counter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to connect a logic analyzer and we'll actually measure the two bits and then we'll look at ways that you can interpret the information in both binary and decimal. Okay, so after you do this lab, you should be able to use an arbitrary waveform generator to create a 2-bit binary counter. You should be able to use a logic analyzer to measure digital signals. And then you should be able to view the information in different formats and understand how logic signals <clears throat> are used to represent information. You're going to need your breadboard and wires, your analog discovery. You're going to need two red LEDs, uh, the discrete ones. And you're going to need two 150 ohm axial resistors. <clears throat> the first part of this is that we're going to create the 2-bit binary counter on the LEDs. Then we'll speed up the arbitrary waveform generator and we'll take a logic analyzer measurement. <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing we want to do is breadboard this circuit. So this is nothing more than a very simple resistor LED circuit, and we're going to do two of them. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to use channel 1 of the analog discovery waveform generator to drive what we'll call bit 0, or the least significant bit. And then we'll use channel 2 of the arbitrary waveform generator to drive bit 1. So when you breadboard this up, <clears throat> the way you can do this is <clears throat> as follows. So if you look at my circuit right here, what I did is instead of actually even using ground wires, I actually just took uh, you know the, the LED and I took the anode uh, and I put it in the same horizontal strip as my resistor and then I put the cathode directly <clears throat> into the ground strip. So I was able to actually wire this entire circuit up resistor LED to ground without even uh, <clears throat> without even using a wire. And then what I did is I brought W1 over from the analog discovery uh, to drive into this resistor right here. And again, I just used uh, a 0 0.1 inch header pin that I had cut apart. And if you don't use those, you can just use a, a standard wire to do that. OK, so when I do this, uh, and then this is going to be W2 from the analog uh, discovery. So we have this signal, or this circuit, wired up. And now what we want to do is we want to configure the analog discovery to output a binary counter. And we can do that by setting up two square waves, one of which has twice the frequency of the other one. And that will represent a, a counting pattern that goes 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Notice that in that pattern, the least significant bit is toggling at a frequency. And the most significant bit is toggling at something that is uh, half that frequency. So so let's do this by first firing up waveforms to control the analog discovery. And what I want to do is I want to start with wave gen. And our wave gen window comes up. And we're going to use two channels now. So the first thing I want to do is go to this channels drop down. And I want to uh, hit two. And what that does is it brings up both. Uh, it brings up both channels in a graphical form. Okay, So what I'd like to do is first let's set both of these up as square waves. And then let's set channel 1 to be 1 hertz. And that will be the faster of the two signals. And then channel 2 will go at a half a hertz, which will be the slower. And that will be the most significant. And then, of course, we need our amplitude as 1.7. 
and our offset is 1.7 and the reason <clears throat> the reason we do that is we want a signal that swings from 3.4 volts down to zero and so we'll go ahead and do that for both <clears throat> okay and there we have it now notice that notice that they look the same but in reality what happened here is that the time scale changed for these so what I want to do is I want to change both of these so that I can visually see their their relationship to each other so I'm gonna first click on this <clears throat> gear button right here and I'm gonna change the background to to light so I can see it a little bit better and I'm gonna thicken up the line and instead of being an auto scale let's do a manual scale and let's change this to 0 0.2 and then a start of 0 0.5 and that will allow the signal to kind of have a couple cycles on the screen okay so then down here let's configure channel 2 it, kind of the same thing so I want a light dark or a light background uh, and then I want to thicken the line up and let's change this to manual and let's change this to point two. That's good. And then the start we can go to 0 0.5. Okay. So now they're kind of on their, they have the exact same time reference. But notice one thing about this is they, if this is the least significant bit up here and this is the most, it's not looking like a binary counter. It's actually starting at uh, if I said the most significant first, I'd be one zero, <clears throat> then I'd be zero one, and then I'd be one one, and then I'd be, or excuse me, zero zero, and then I'd be zero one one. So if you look at this, this isn't really the binary count that we want. We want it to start with zero zero, and then zero one, and then one zero one one. So we can fix this if we could just shift this waveform over to the left. And I can do that by adjusting the phase. So if I go over to the phase of channel 2 and I change it to 90, what it does is it shifts it. And now look at it. It's 0, 0 is right here in this region. 0, 1 is in this region. 1, 0 is in this region. And 1, 0 is in that. And then 1, 1 is there. So by doing this, I can configure the arbitrary waveform generator to have these two signals that are a binary count. Now. And before we run this, we want to make sure that these two channels are synchronized to each other, meaning that they'll start at the exact same moment. Okay, once I do that, go ahead and click Run All. It configures, and I should see a binary counter. So check this out. This is going to be the faster or the least significant bit, and you can see that it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And I did it. I now have created a simple 2-bit binary counter pattern using the arbitrary waveform generator. So to record this for your records, what you want to do is take a short video of this, less, you know, 3 seconds, less than 5 seconds, uh, just to document that you actually have accomplished this deliverable for this lab exercise. Okay, the next deliverable is we need to look at the logic analyzer. Now, a logic analyzer is an instrument which will allow us to view information in digital form. And it's, an, it's similar to an oscilloscope in that you graphically show what the information being measured is, except it's different than, than an oscilloscope because an oscilloscope shows the actual analog wave, so it shows everything. Uh, a, log a logic analyzer does not do that. It only shows the ones and zeros. The advantage of a logic analyzer is since you only store ones and zeros or highs and lows, the circuitry is much, much simpler than an oscilloscope. And that allows the circuitry to be smaller, so a logic analyzer can have more channels. So if you look at the analog discovery, you know, it's got two oscilloscope channels, right, one, one and two, but it's got 16 logic analyzer channels. So what we want to do is we want to measure what's happening on the counter by plugging in the logic analyzer, let's put channel zero over here uh, at this moment or at this point of the circuit, and then let's put channel one right here. And so the easiest way to do that is I'm, I pull my little leads out here and I've got channel zero is kind of this pink looking wire and I went ahead and put a 0.1 inch header in there or you could use a breadboard wire and I'm actually gonna stick that in that slot right there in between the resistor and the LED that will allow me to measure this value right there and I'm only gonna measure the ones and zeros okay now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take channel one which is green I'm gonna put that in that location and so I have I've got my two logic analyzer probes connected. Okay, 
So let's go over here and set up the logic analyzer. So I'm going to go ahead and say workspace, or excuse me, I'm going to go welcome. That takes me back to my main screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit logic. And now what I'm going to do is set up what we call the bus. All right, we need to tell it what signals we're measuring. Okay, and so what I do is I'm going to come over here and I click to add channels and I want to add a bus, meaning that it's a group of signals. So we, this window comes up and I'm going to call my bus count and you can see right here it has DIO standing for digital input output and it's got 15 to 0 so it's got 16 channels. This is where we tell it what are the signals that are going to be in this bus called count and I want to take 1 and 0 and add them. A bus is a generic term that refers to a group of signals. Okay, So in this situation we have a 2-bit bus uh, and we can interpret those bits as information. When I do this, I've now defined that. I want you to go ahead and change the format to be binary because I want to look at the ones and zeros first. Okay, so I go ahead and say add. And now I'm ready to take a measurement. Except my circuit's running super slow. So in order to get this to give us all more information that we can look at at once, let's go ahead and go back to the wave gen and let's crank up the frequency. So instead of being one hertz on the least significant bit, Go ahead and make that one kilohertz, and so it's super fast. And then come down here and make this uh, 500 hertz. And so now we got 500 hertz in that, and they're still running. And when I look at my circuit now, the, the LEDs are continuously on, meaning that we can't see them changing. So I go back to logic. Make sure your base is at one millisecond per division, because that's about roughly what we'll be able to see. And if I go ahead and hit run, data starts scrolling. So these are the ones and zeros that the logic analyzer is measuring. And if I hit stop, I can kind of look at this. And I could set up a trigger to, to trigger on like a pattern, like, like t equals zero is equal to zero, zero. But for now, let's just look at the information. So check out what I have here. I have count, and it is a two-bit bus. You know, it's a two-bit number. So I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. The measurement is combining this into one particular binary number. The most significant, least significant bus or bits are actually displayed here, and I can actually, you know, I can collapse them, but by default they're, they're expanded. And these two represent exactly what's coming out of the arbitrary waveform generator. So this is phenomenal. I have a measurement of just ones and zeros. And you can see the power of a logic analyzer because you can measure like many, many signals at once and interpret the information as anything. OK, let's do one last thing. I want to change the format that the logic analyzer interprets this data as from binary to decimal. So if I come in here, I double click on count, and this comes up. Go to the format and change this to decimal. Okay, And then when I say OK, Look at what happens. I now have the bus being interpreted as a two-bit unsigned, meaning it's a positive, decimal number. This is kind of the first time we actually see ones and zeros that are being interpreted by something, the something being the logic analyzer, as information. And the information is just a simple decimal number, but look at the power of this. We have just these individual bits by themselves, they're just a 1 or a 0, 1 or a 0. But when you start combining them to have multiple bits and you interpret multiple bits at once, you can start forming larger and larger pieces of information such as a decimal number. Okay, that is the that is the second part of this exercise. For your records, go ahead and take a screenshot of this window and that will satisfy the requirements for deliverable, deliverable number two of this, meaning that you can run a logic analyzer and interpret the results. So now take just a second and think about the following. After you did these activities, can you use an arbitrary waveform generator to create a two-bit binary counting pattern? Can you use a logic analyzer to measure the digital values of a signal or signals in a circuit? And can you view the logic analyzer results in different bases to see how the logic analyzer or the logic signals are interpreted as numbers? Okay, and that is it.